how to get business acumen and domain knowledge while you're still trying to learn data science before you've really had a job in the field or in the types of businesses that you want to work in. It's probably one of the most common questions that I get. I've had incredible success throughout my career because I have very strong communication skills, business acumen, and I got to know the people, the users, the stakeholders, the customers. I got to know them. And so I've had tremendous career success, not only because I have technical capabilities, but also because of business acumen and domain knowledge. More and more companies are catching on to this. And so the question now comes back to how do you get either one of these before you get into the field, before you get into your first job so that you can land that first job? So domain expertise and business acumen are actually different things. A lot of times they get com confused for each other, but they're actually different. Business acumen covers how businesses and the marketplace, the thing that the businesses exist in, how those work. And it, com it covers the dynamics of companies and how they operate. But domain expertise covers how industries and functional areas within businesses work. So business acumen is focused on value creation and value return. And that's described by what maybe have heard the term value stream. That's how businesses describe it. Whereas domain knowledge is more focused on the workflow, the actual things that are done and the value that those items, those things that you do, those pieces of your job or your role, how those create value. And so the reason why you learn these is because with domain expertise, domain knowledge, business acumen, those two combine to help you create higher value projects. Now let's get into exactly what domain knowledge is and how do you get it? The, the two main questions to answer here are number one, what domains are there? And I'm going to break them down into three categories. And then how do you choose a domain? And that has everything to do with the three categories. So the first one to look at is AI maturity. And uh, what I'm pulling these from is various surveys done by companies like Accenture and IBM, where they talk to senior leaders, they talk to people who are data leaders and ask, you know, what's the level of maturity in your company? What use cases are you focusing on? And so on. So the first area we're going to cover is AI maturity and the most mature industries are technology, things like Google, Facebook, you know, the, the industries and companies that you would expect, automotive, aerospace and defense, life sciences, natural resources, things like mining, retail, utilities, manufacturing and industry in general, and then finally banking and finance. Those are the most mature. Now, that doesn't mean there aren't other industries that you can get into. It's simply if you're looking for a way to choose an industry, you may want to look at maturity because the more mature the company is, the more interesting and advanced the projects that you're going to end up working on will be. But industries like healthcare, they're getting into data science and machine learning or AI just as heavily as some of the others are. However, they're less mature because of data privacy restrictions and regulatory restrictions. So they simply haven't been able to go as fast. Gaming, if you like video games, they definitely use data science, machine learning, but their use cases right now are fairly limited. As soon as the metaverse becomes more of a thing, more of an actual instead of a buzzword, you're going to see increasing numbers of use cases in gaming over the next three to five years. So it doesn't mean that you can't go into another industry that isn't on that list. You'll just be walking into something that isn't as mature yet. And so the use case will be a little less advanced. You'll be building a whole lot of the foundations and framework before you end up getting to work on those more interesting projects. You can also decide by functional area. Functional area is also a way to create domain knowledge. So HR, one functional area. Uh, customer service, customer support, manufacturing, IT and information security, supply chain, marketing, marketing's huge, sales, the other side of marketing, finance and legal. Those are all functional areas within the business and each one of them has a high level of focus or some very interesting high value use cases 
for data science and machine learning. Then let's get to use cases. That is the third way that you can sort of select a domain is based on use case. IT operations, hardware, network, and software management, all of that. Huge, huge area of focus. Probably the number one area of focus in data science and machine learning right now. Fraud detection, customer care, customer service type experiences, uh, business workflow automation and process automation, process discovery, uh, inventory management, supply chain efficiency, anything that's workforce automation or digitizing work, digital workers, that's very, very big right now. Uh, monitoring and control of things like smart meters or physical structure like buildings and maintenance type monitoring, asset utilization and optimization of asset utilization, your transportation, route optimization, wearables uh, using for training or wearables for maintenance. You can actually use wearables in VR and augmented reality to train your workforce to do particular tasks. That's a compelling and emerging use case. Uh, Sensor-based manufacturing or IoT industry of, th you know, Internet of Things, excuse me. Autonomous vehicles, drones, that's a very big use case. Contract management, contract review, and then finally, again, fraud detection. So any one of those is going to be a, those are good places to get domain expertise. But again, just remember, because I didn't mention it doesn't mean you can't go in that direction. But if you're looking for a way to select something, these are great starting points for you. You know, if you're just kind of like, I, I don't know what to do, pick one of those three categories and pick something that sounds interesting to you. Um, so how do you learn? How do you start learning this stuff? Well, the first thing you can do is set up a Google alert. I kid you not. It could be just as simple as putting in the name, you know, like fraud detection, machine learning, and you set up a Google alert on that. What Google alerts does is it goes through all the content, finds some of the best content around your particular search string, your search term, which again, it's the domain, whether that's an industry, whether that's a functional area, or whether that's a use case, and the word machine learning. What that's going to do is give you industry publications. It's going to give you content. And if you read maybe one, two articles a day from the email that Google sends you, you're going to start understanding the language, the vernacular that people use in that particular domain. Most of the articles that you're going to get are kind of eh, questionable, but you're not really learning from the content. You're learning from the concepts. You're learning the ideas, the things that people in that area who are not technical are most interested in and what they're talking about. You'll learn new key terms. You'll learn to really look at, look at that domain from a different non-technical perspective, from the user perspective, from the senior leadership perspective, from the value perspective. You'll learn about use cases that are on top of mind for that domain. And then you get to the other side you want to start doing the technical knowledge. And you can get that in two ways. The first one is going to archive and just look at Google, basically that domain or not Google, excuse me, search for that domain on archive. You're going to get technical papers and papers with code is another good one where you just basically in that search bar, put your domain and you're going to get the technical papers that are written about solving problems within that domain. And if all you do is read the abstract and the conclusion, you'll get an idea of which machine learning approaches are being used. What are the biggest challenges facing people, data scientists, data professionals in that field? And how are those challenges being addressed? What type of research areas are most promising? So you'll have an understanding of where to focus your data science and machine learning education from a technical standpoint to support your capability to solve some of those problems that are confronting the space. The other thing to look at is software vendors. So any software vendors that are major players in that space for your domain applications, for those use cases that are associated with either the industry, the functional area, or if you're just gonna target a use case, you really look at that use case across industries because a use case can, it can be applicable 
across multiple different industries. And so you're looking for software vendors who provide solutions to your particular domain, and they are also going to be an excellent source of information and domain, uh, domain knowledge because they're going to be writing blog posts about how their product solves problems in this space. So you'll get some great domain knowledge there, but you're also going to understand their products and the features that they offer. Because again, that's the other side, the more technical side of providing solutions to some of the problems that are facing the domain that you're looking to go into. So that is how you're going to end up learning more about the domain. But how about business acumen? Business acumen covers four main areas. You've got business strategy, business management, economics, and communications. Those are your four main areas. You could definitely go deeper and you can go in different directions. But I would say that if you're going to pick four main categories, those would be the one, the ones. So business strategy and business, uh, business management, they're two sides of the same coin. Strategy is, this is my definition of it, is the study of leverage and advantage in competitive zero-sum games. Whereas management, your business management is the study of strategic planning and implementation. And so basically those are the concepts of value creation and value return. That's what you learn when you study business strategy and business management. You learn about how a business creates products, why it creates products, why it has this particular business model. Why does it have its particular operating model? Why does it pick a technology model? So what is each one of those? What is a business model? Business model is a statement of value creation. It just talks about what the business monetizes. How does it make money? Why does it make money that way? Your operating model is more specific. Your business models are fairly generic and you can look at 15, 20 different business models, businesses, and you can say, okay, these fall into this particular category of business model. So those are kind of genericized across businesses, whereas operating models are more specific to the individual business. It's tailored to that business, to the talent, to the customer base, to the product, to, you know, there's so much more specificity to an operating model than there is really to a business model. And the operating model explains how the business creates value. Just how does it build that product? How does it operate as efficiently as possible? And then finally, your technology model explains how the business leverages technology to build value. Why, why does it use the technologies that it does as part of the business value creation process? And you can think of the operating model as sort of your manual and your human side of the value creation or your value stream. And you can think of the technology model as the digital side of value creation or your value stream. Now, economics is the next piece of your business acumen puzzle. You have macro factors that you have to learn, micro factors, if you refer to macroeconomics, microeconomics, that's exactly what those two are. And then finally, competitive strategy and competitive forces. Those are your key areas. There are tons of classes out there that can teach them to you. Communications is your final area. The main areas to learn with communications are communications objectives you speak for purpose. What is that purpose? What are your objectives? Communications discipline, staying on purpose, staying on track, creating these high level frameworks so that you can achieve your communication objectives without getting derailed, without getting distracted. Communications for impact and persuasion. Remember, the reason why we communicate is to give knowledge and receive knowledge. But there are outcomes, business outcomes that are expected from every interaction, every engagement. And so that is for impact and persuasion. And then finally, facilitating communications in a group setting. Sometimes you're not just talking to people and listening to people. You're getting people to talk and you're getting people to listen. So that's facilitating communications in a group. Now, anytime you look at business acumen, the higher level classes that you can take in college or really online anywhere, they're going to teach a very broad and generalized approach to each one of these. And so classes, online courses, books, those are all valid ways of learning business acumen but they're not going to be tailored specifically to your job and what you do. Now, there are people like me who create classes specifically for data professionals. 
that is a more targeted approach. And obviously, I make those make those cards and sound a little biased about going in this direction for your education, but it's not the only way to do it. You can also, through internships, take the opportunity to talk to people in the business, talk to people in external business units, talk to senior leaders, talk to stakeholders, and ask them about what they do, begin to understand their job, their expectations for data, their expectations for models. What are they looking for you to provide to them value-wise? Most people, when they get an internship, they focus completely on the technology side and they forget they have this opportunity to understand the domain, to understand the business itself and how the business functions. And so definitely take advantage of those on the job opportunities. Conferences are another amazing opportunity to get some business acumen and domain knowledge. You go to a conference, you're going to hear speakers talk about how the business operates with respect to your particular domain. In many cases, they'll begin to talk about applications of software. They'll also talk about the industry itself. And that's where you get some business acumen. It's very specific to your job, to your use case, to your domain. So again, go back to those software companies. Most of those software vendors have conferences that they either participate in, sponsor, or run. Each one of those is an opportunity. If you can get to go to one or two of these conferences a year, you're going to get that domain knowledge and some business acumen. There are also great opportunities to network. Where I said, you know, in the internships, talk to people in the business. You can do the same thing at conferences. Talk to people about what they do. Be interested in how they produce value. What do they see as the future of your field? What do they want from people like you? What do they wish people like you knew? These are all great questions. And there's not a whole lot of risk in it. It's not like you're trying to sell something. And everybody at a conference is used to trying to be sold, not, hey, what do you think? Hey, tell me about your job. People are way more likely to explain what they do for a living. They love talking about themselves. So there's some great networking opportunities anytime you go to a conference. So those are the main ways that you learn business acumen. Is you, classes, coursework, internships, on the job is absolutely the best way. And then finally, you can look at courses that are specific to business acumen for data professionals. Those are going to be your most effective coursework approach. But... Remember, on the job or interacting with people who do work in that domain, whether it's data professionals or people who are frontline workers or senior leaders or stakeholders in that area that you're interested in, they're also going to give you insights into business acumen and how the business, at least that side, that domain functions. So again, that's very targeted domain knowledge and business acumen being delivered in those conferences through talks. And if you can find a conference that has, you know, those hands-on sessions, those are absolutely amazing. Take those opportunities to learn. But remember, you don't go into your first job fully baked. No one, no one is fully baked in their first role and no one expects you to be. However, you are going to stand out if you understand how your job as a data professional connects to the business and creates value for the business. Hiring managers are very focused on getting people who want to produce for users, for value, for the business, because that's the point. That's what we get paid to do. And so many data scientists come out of school, come out of boot camps or whatever sort of educational curriculum without a focus or an understanding of the business, without really knowing how to put it together, how to take capabilities and create value, how to solve business problems. That's what business acumen and domain expertise does. It allows you to showcase that you're not just technically capable, you are capable of creating value with your technical capabilities. That's why it's so critical and why it'll make you stand out from everyone else. But again, remember, the goal is not perfection. The goal is to be able to apply your capabilities to high value use cases. Don't worry about becoming a domain expert or a business expert. That'll come over time. 